Hi there. In this year one macroeconomic topic video, we're going to focus on the accelerator effect. So what is the accelerator effect? Well, it's the relationship between planned capital investment spending by businesses and the pace or the rate of change of a country's national income or GDP. Consider an example where the demand from consumers in a particular industry is expanding quickly. Businesses may initially respond just by using more intensively their productive capacity or perhaps running down the stocks of, of the finished products they have. But if they expect demand to continue to be high, then there's probably an incentive driven by the profit motive to increase their investment spending on new plant and machinery, new factories, new technologies because that investment will allow them to increase their supply side capacity. So the accelerator effect says this, when demand is high and growing in an economy, oftentimes we see a follow on increase in capital investment. Here's some examples of uh, possible accelerator effects in action. One of the biggest, fastest growing industries in the world at the moment is cloud computing services. And clearly, as demand is increasing so quickly, uh, cloud computing businesses are falling over themselves to increase their investment in infrastructure. Likewise, if you think about the mobile networks, the big telecoms companies, the demand for data and data services for households and businesses continues to, to grow extremely rapidly. And therefore, both of these sectors will need to increase their capital investment. Take an example of cloud infrastructure providers. Amazon has nearly one third through Amazon Web Services. It's a tremendously fast growing business. It's also the most profitable part of Amazon. But all of these businesses, Amazon, Microsoft and Google, they'll be ramping up their investment spending in order to provide the necessary supply side capacity to meet growing demand. It's interesting that if you look at the, uh, the businesses that hog most of the data traffic on the internet, this data, by the way, is from the end of 2014. It probably won't have changed. That at peak times in the USA, Netflix and YouTube account for nearly 50% of the downstream traffic on the, in the United States. So clearly, in this kind of industry, you need to have the supply side capacity to meet the demand, for example, for streaming services from Netflix. And I think this is a good example of of where a dry concept such as the accelerator can become real. Other industries that might see a positive accelerator effect as the demand for airline travel increases, both short haul and long haul, airlines will invest more to expand their fleet sizes. That's particularly the case for short haul, low cost destinations. For example, the rapid growth of short haul, low cost flying in Asia and also in Africa. And as the balance of energy supply shifts towards renewables, we're likely to see significant capital investment in renewable sectors, such as wind power and solar. Now, we've talked so far about the positive accelerator effect. Of course, there can also be a negative accelerator effect. And that can happen when the growth of demand in an industry either slows down or becomes negative. So, for example, if there's a fall in the price of copper in the world markets, we'd expect to see a fall in capital investment in copper mining. The steel industry at the moment is in the news. There's global excess capacity. The world price of steel has been falling. All kinds of protectionist issues being raised in the, in the UK, for example. But the fall in the price of steel because of overcapacity has led to some steel closures the threats of significant plant closures and a fall in investment spending. This is really an example of the negative accelerator starting to kick in. So in this short topic video, we've just focused a little bit on the idea of the accelerator. Just to remind you, it's the relationship between the growth of demand, consumer spending, for example, and the growth of planned capital investment. That's the line of causation you need to think about. Hopefully this has been useful. Thanks for joining in and uh, check out more videos, of course, on our YouTube channel 
and on the Tutor Due website.